Thank you very much, Greg, for that kind introduction. I just found out my colleague, uh, Gary Brightcruz, is here. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I want to thank you very much for inviting me to be part of your 83rd annual general meeting of the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters. I have always said uh, that the closest uh, thing to heaven that you can get is dangling your bare feet over the side of a boat uh, and waiting for the fish to take your hook as you watch the sun come up over the horizon. So uh, I love to do that, don't do it nearly often enough, uh, but I know that many of you can relate to that uh, very good feeling. I want to tell you that our government truly values the partnership that we have established over the years uh, with the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters. In fact, it was two years ago during this very annual meeting that we signed a memorandum of understanding with the Federation in support of your Atlantic Salmon Restoration Initiative. I believe this is a very important work which deserves our full support. I want you to know that we take it seriously and are looking at how we can continue to partner with you on this in the future. Your organization continues to do tireless and valuable work on behalf of some of Ontario's most treasured resources. You are a tireless advocate for the province's natural resources and the rights and traditions of anglers and hunters. I know you pursue this mandate with commitment, with focus and with great success. A prime example of this is your work uh, to abolish this wasteful and ineffective long gun registry. You have supported our efforts to make sure that law-abiding farmers and duck hunters are not prosecuted, but that criminals are. You've stood by us in this initiative, and we've stood by you, and we thank you. I want to specifically mention the great work of Mike Reeder and Greg Ferrant on this. And I understand uh, that Mike will be retiring uh, after this year. And Mike, I want to thank you for your work, and I know that you'll be sadly missed. Your tireless efforts and national leadership on behalf of OFH has not gone unnoticed. Time and time again over the decades, you have demonstrated that your words are backed up by action. From conservation projects to education, from restoration to advocacy your efforts get results. As Canada's Minister of Fisheries, I share your priorities and commend you on this excellent work. Cooperation between our government and conservation, conservation groups like yours helps us to develop measures that ensure the continued health of the province's fishery. Fisheries and Oceans Canada's Habitat Management Program is a perfect example. This program helps protect and conserve fish habitat so your members can continue to enjoy sport fishing in the rivers, lakes, and the streams of Ontario. Our government may have legislated the responsibility for managing our waterways and resources, but we can only fully achieve that goal through partnerships with organizations such as this one. That's why I'm very proud to announce today that $25,000 uh, of support will go to the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters for hosting the National Fish and Wildlife Conservation Congress to be held in Ottawa in May of 2012. <laughs> this will be the first time this event is hosted in Canada and our government is proud to support an event that is expected to bring participants from all across North America to our beautiful nation's capital. We are pleased to partner with you. Perhaps nothing better demonstrates our cooperative approach to fisheries management than our joint effort to defeat the threat to our lakes and rivers from the invasive species known as Asian carp. Last Friday, Fisheries and Oceans Canada, along with your federation and a number of other partners, conducted the final component of a tabletop exercise that will better equip us to combat the proliferation of Asian carp. These invaders hold the potential to significantly threaten the future of our lakes and inland waterways and the valuable aquatic life that they contain. We must remain diligent. It's our firm belief that preventing the introduction of invasive species is much more effective than trying to control them after they have established themselves in an ecosystem. We need to look no further than the sea lamprey control program to illustrate that point. 
Last fall, we launched a comprehensive project to identify areas in the Great Lakes most vulnerable to Asian carp and determine likely routes where they could enter the lake system. We've dedicated $415,000 over the next two years to this project. This funding is in addition to the $4 million invested through Budget 2010 to support Fisheries and Oceans Canada's National Aquatic Invasive Species Program. The information that will flow from this study is vital to both Canada and the United States in determining more immediate and effective countermeasures to keep this invasive species out of our waterways. The study builds on earlier cooperative work with the United States and it's intended to result in a better understanding of potential entry, establishment, spread and impact of the Asian carp. It will provide essential information for decision makers regarding monitoring, rapid response and management. On another front in our battle against Asian carp, our government last year provided Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters with a contribution of $30,000 to help your organization with awareness programs, reporting protocols and development of prevention and decontamination measures. This is $30,000 a year for five years. And I understand that my officials met recently with representatives of your organization to discuss aquatic invasive species regulations. I want to thank the Federation for its excellent input into the regulatory process. You were on the front lines and your opinion is invaluable. I hardly need to tell this audience about the importance to our country of the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River. Together they represent some of our most significant fisheries, contributing a combined $1.8 billion to our economy annually. I want you to know that our government understands the value of the Great Lakes fishery to Ontarians and Canadians and is taking proactive, targeted action to ensure that this unique freshwater resource is protected for the benefit of future generations. Having grown up in a fishing village and in a fishing family, I have wonderful memories of taking the boat out and spending the afternoon fishing. And I'm sure that many of you in this room can relate to that. So on a different note, I just want to tell you uh, about an, a note of something that might be of interest to you. And it's about an announcement made by my colleague, uh, the Honorable Chuck Strahl. Effective immediately, registration uh, for all human-powered vessels such as canoes, kayaks, small sailing vessels, and all motorized vessels uh, with 10 horsepower or less will no, no longer be required. Uh, so whoever wins the kayak uh, out front will no longer have to register it. <laughs> the exceptions uh, are vessels used for commercial river rafting government vessels and in the future those vessels that may need to be registered uh, for reasons of safety. So we're committed to promoting marine safety but we're also committed to reducing red tape and doing things that make sense. We're also committed to supporting recreational activities like canoeing and kayaking and fishing that Canadians outdoors enjoy so much. So I want to thank you uh, for allowing me to be a small part of your meeting this afternoon. Uh, I'm excited about our continued partnership and I look forward to working with you uh, on restoring, uh, conserving and sustainably developing our aquatic ecosystems for today, for tomorrow and for well into the future. And just before I wrap up, uh, I just want to tell you uh, just a little story about Greg Ferrant. He likes... <laughs> I did see him walking this way. <laughs> anyway, as most of you know, Greg likes to fish. And uh, he had, was having a terrible day fishing. He sat in the blazing sun all day in his boat, and he didn't catch a single fish, right? So on his way home, of course, he stopped at the supermarket, and uh, he ordered four walleye. So he told the salesman, he said, pick out four large ones and throw them at me, will you? And the salesman said, why would I throw them at you? He said, because I have to tell my wife, Sherry, that I caught them. Well, the salesman said, okay, but I'd suggest that you take rainbow trout. Greg said, why would I take rainbow trout? He said, because 
Sherry came by earlier today and said, if Greg comes by, tell him to bring trout. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, first Candace Hepner and now Gail Shea. I mean, does it get much better than being, <laughs> being slagged by federal cabinet minister? That's great. I'm moving up the ladder next to the prime minister. Um, we'd like to thank the minister for taking time for, to be with us today, for her husband Russell to be here, which was a nice surprise to meet him, and for her staff for arranging this visit. And I cannot stress enough how important this minister's leadership on invasive species on the Great Lakes has been. And I can't stress enough about how open her door is when OFH visits Ottawa. Gail Shea is always there to talk to us, to listen, and to help. So thank her again, please, for coming to see us today.